It's 10 o'clock here in Syracuse, New York. Time for your fight of the week. Brought to you by two great names you see all across the nation. Perhaps Blue Ribbon, the most popular answer to the most famous musical question ever asked. And Menon, makers of those famous Menon products for men. Yes, the fans are in their seats at the War Memorial Auditorium to see tonight's 10-round heavyweight contest matched by the International Boxing Club, James D. Norris, president between Eddie Machen of Redding, California and Johnny Summerlin of Detroit, Michigan. Your reserve seats are ready. We'll be at ringside in 90 seconds. Here's something that's fun, I think, because you've all done it. Collecting copies of old sheet music. You know, some of these tunes, and uh, titles too, for that matter, were really dillies. Especially those ones that had the flappers and the bows on by John Held. Remember those back in the 20s? Sorry to admit I do. Kind of amazing, though, how those old songs actually reflect the, well, the tempo of the times. Even found that to be true in these copies of some of the first singing commercials ever written. That's right, we've had them with us for a long time. Here's one from back before the turn of the century. Let's see, I can't read these Roman numerals. I think it's uh, 1890, though, when marches were favorites. I can see them marching into the grand ballroom now. Of course, we ought to have an old German band for that one. Look at this cover right here, will you? Hey, where is it? I had a waltz here. Yeah, here it is. This will really get you. This was written back in, uh, let's see, IV, that would be 19, 1904, I guess. And it goes something like this. Let's see. Uh, Here's to the past blue ribbon, the fear of the last 60 years. Well, it's not hard to see why that isn't around anymore, but of course, Paps has been with us for almost twice that long now, and it's gotten better every year, too. Things change over the years. That includes music. And nowadays, it seems they've got to have a little a little bounce to it. Be light, like this uh, most recent version here, the most famous musical question ever asked, like Steve just talked about. It's uh, not by Wagner, as I've told you before. It's by Irv Wagner and Bill Gale. And let's see, today it goes uh, more like this, I think. Uh, since back in 1844, folks who really know the score have done their first a happy favor. And as for the beer with a singing flavor, what do you have? Have two ribbon. What do you have? Have two ribbon. What do you have? Singing flavor. Have two ribbon beer. Eleventh or something that I kind of like to throw in there. Well, seriously, you know, the tie-up between Pabst Blue Ribbon and music over the years is certainly a logical one, because Pabst has always been music to deep down thirst. Kind of a harmony of clear, brilliant notes for light-hearted pleasure, but blended with the rich, mellow notes of old-fashioned character. So whenever you hear what do you have, no matter how they sing it or play it, you sing out for Pabst Blue Ribbon, the beer with a flavor that sings. Remember, it's a product of America's oldest national brewer, established back in 1844. I understand that our old friend Jack Grease is doing real fine and should be back with us next week. But until then, we're real happy to have with us that wonderful blow-by-blow -blow describer from radio, Steve Ellis, who can take it a little bit easier tonight. Steve? Hello, everybody. Thank you, Bill. Well, we're at the beautiful War Memorial Auditorium in Syracuse, New York, almost ready to go. A heavyweight fight and a hot one, too. One between an undefeated kid from California, a kid from the coast named Eddie Machen, 18 straight victories, 14 by knockouts, and that's a wonderful record. And he's meeting another real good top big man, a fellow by the name of Big John Summerlin. Summerlin, from Detroit, Michigan, has been to the ring post on 38 occasions, and he's scored, well, 19 wins by decision, 11 via the KO route, and only six setbacks. So this fellow, too, is one of the top-ranked boys. And right now, we're almost set to go in the fight here in Syracuse. It's a fight that has a strong bearing on the heavyweight ranks. These fellows would love to meet the new champion, Floyd Patterson. Let's see how they look to you. Let's go up to our ring announcer in Syracuse, Dick Tobin. All right, Dick. Ladies and gentlemen, this heavyweight boxing bout 
is being arranged for your pleasure by promoter Norm Rothschilds of the Arena Boxing Club, Syracuse, New York, in conjunction with the International Boxing Club, James D. Norris, the President. And the officials have been assigned here tonight by the New York State Athletic Commission, our judges, Richie Fazio, Dick Albino. The timekeeper is Mike Dempsey, counting for the knockdowns is Jack Milicic, and the referee is Joe Palmer. Feature event, 10 rounds. From San Francisco, California, wearing white trunks with black stripes, and weighing 190 and a quarter pounds, Eddie Machen. Eddie Machen. And his opponent is from Detroit, Michigan, He's wearing black trunks with white stripes, and he weighs 196, Johnny Summerlin. Summerlin. Ten rounds, other bouts to follow, referee Joe Palmer. Ben, you both know the rules of New York State. I just want you to watch your low blows. I also want you to protect yourself at all times. Do you have any questions? I want a good, clean, hard fight. Shake hands now and come out when the bell rings. The fellows didn't have any questions. They'll give the answers in leather. Eight-ounce leather gloves, round scoring system, the bell, and we're in number one. Eddie Machen, smaller of the two by a couple of inches, 5'11 to 6 feet, lighter by 5 and 3 quarter pounds, in the white trunks. John Summerlin, the faster starter, the big man in the black tights. Incidentally, Machen, with that 18 straight tonight, is favored to win this fight. minutes to go in round one. On style, Machen on the white trunks has a good straight left hand, good jab, and from long range when he sets you up, a hard right hand smash. Mm. As for Big John Summerlin, this fellow has lots of perpetual motion. We'll put punches together. We'll double them up and sometime whack three times in a row. About a minute more in the first round. Pretty good right hand by Machen, a right over a left actually. I notice, how about you, when the kids get in close, they're both 24 years of age incidentally, Summerlin seems to fire more leather toward the body mainly. Good hook. Closing seconds of the first round. everybody, this is Jack Grayson. And now, the story of two very famous people, presenting the sad case, the very sad case of Caesar and Cleopatra. Hey there, uh, Julie, are you sure you don't need a man's deodorant? Well, I mean, of course, Menon spray deodorant for men. This is the one that more men use than any other, because, first of all, it kills odor all day long. 
Yes, and it checks excess perspiration, too. And it does that the fast, modern way, with no goo, no mess. Here is the quickest, the easiest way to get He-Man protection. Just squeeze, and it sprays. A quick follow-through with Menon Spray Deodorant completes your morning grooming. So get Menon Spray Deodorant for men, the deodorant that more men use than any other. The bell for round number two. Machen has been soundly taught with a good straight left and a nice right, straight right hand. Hook and Summerlin is hurt, definitely hurt. Big John Summerlin is absolutely hurt. Let's watch for Machen's finishing power. Summerlin's recuperative power. Two minutes to go in round two. John in the black trunk seems to be okay now. He appears to have weathered the storm thus far. Come on, Johnny. On style, though, it looks a lot to me anyway. How about to you that Summerlin gets hit with straight punches? Although he was hit with one good left hook in the first round, however, the shot that hurt him was a good straight right. Boom! A minute more in the second round. man from Syracuse is the third man in the ring tonight. And we have a half minute more in this second round. Straight punches continually get through the defensive guard of John Summerlin. Well, Summerlin and Black Trunks definitely got out of that big storm early part of this round. In their darkest hours, they plead for help. They are the distressed people of Hungary. Many of their needs are being met through your contributions to the Red Cross Hungarian Relief Fund. This is an urgent plea. Help these people to help themselves. Send your contribution at once to your Red Cross chapter. Now let's take a look into the corner of Mr. John Summerlin over to the lower left-hand side of your screen. John, as we said a while ago, is just 24 years of age, born in Luverne, Alabama. He has that firebrand style, especially effective in these early rounds, although he was absolutely hurt the early part of round two. He's a spectacular big guy, a fellow who can uh, pour it on if you allow him to work inside. Right now, they've talked to him, they have him feeling in good condition again. Lives in Detroit, you know, has defeated Harold Carter and young Jack Johnson, among others. We're in round three. has orders to put those punches together.
together, combination shots. Double up because his first punch is usually blocked or partially blocked. Body digger, Mr. Summerlin. Two minutes more in this third round. Ooh! Eddie Machen slightly hurt. Machen and the White Trunks from Redding, California. Will prove one thing tonight, whether or not he can take that big blow. know the boy can hit. Approximately 55 seconds to go in this round. John's body blows are very effective. Beautiful right hand shot. Ten seconds to go in this third round. This, of course, is the best round by far for the underdog, Johnny Summerlin, on the right. And here's another fine product from Pabst's Sparkling Beverages. Nature Pure Refreshment in six sparkling flavors. Youngsters love the real fruit flavor in Pabst's Sparkling Beverages and no deposit to pay, no empties to return. Because Pabst's Sparkling Beverages are packed in flavor-locked mirror cans. A miracle of convenience. Well, here we are, set for round number four at the War Memorial Auditorium in Syracuse, New York. <laughs> Summerlin's record of 38 fights and a winning record, as we pointed out a while ago, has proved that he's a very good starter in the first four, five, six rounds of the fight. Summerlin lost his mouthpiece. The uppercut whacked it out of the mouth. Joe Palmer, the referee, just picked up the rubber mouth guard. minutes to go on this fourth round.
Eddie Machen have had him on a few of our Wednesday night shows with fellas like Nino Valdez and Johnny Holman scored knockouts in the latter rounds of each fight and Machen proved that he can whack hard from long range especially after he sizes you up real well have about a minute more in this fourth round whether you notice the shoes on the fighters. You can see them now. You'll note that the shoes on John Summerlin in the black trunks are very high. They're about 11 inches high, 11 inches off the ground. Gives the big boy lots of support. Won't hamper his movements because he has that flat-footed stance. Well... Next Wednesday night, we invite you to be our guest for the 309th Wednesday night fight, direct from ringside at Madison Square Garden in New York City. We'll bring you a 10-round featherweight bout between Paul Jorgensen of Port Arthur, Texas, and Carmelo Costa of Brooklyn, New York. Jorgie, who will make his national TV debut on your Wednesday night fights, has had a sensational rise to the number two ranking featherweight by having won his last 11 fights. This includes wins over Laura Salas, former lightweight champion Teddy Davis and Jackie Blair. Carmella, who ranks number five, has met his opponents in, uh, in two previous battles. The first to draw, the second a split win for Jorgensen getting the verdict. So Costa will be aiming to even the score. Should be a good fight from the first bell. Be sure to tune us in. Remember, your TV ticket to the fight are the products that brings you the fights. Bats Blue Ribbon and Menon Products for Men. We're in the fifth round now. Machen seems to be showing more of a variety of punches thus far in this round. Hooking from long range. Summerlin's style offsets your idea a lot of fighting. In other words, he'll discourage you by continually bullying you or forcing the action, staying on top and hitting you downstairs and then upstairs, the body and the head.
Machen has the foot on the defensive a lot by Summerlin's style. Machen continually backing off and looking to pick his shot. Ten seconds more in this fifth round. What makes this guy smile even when the wind blows and the snow snows? Well, perhaps it's men and after. The different aftershave lotion that's designed for winter shaving needs. You see, daily shaves can scrape the natural oils off your face, leaving it dry. And then wind and weather often make your skin chapped and even more uncomfortable. That's why you like AFTA. It conditions your skin by helping to replenish those oils. And it leaves your face feeling smooth and comfortable. Creamy AFTA soothes your face, too. It cannot sting, you know. So get Menon AFTA, the different aftershave lotion. And by the way, AFTA makes a swell gift, too. So this Christmas, why not remember the men with Menon? Hey folks, we're all set now for the second half of the heavyweight go here in Syracuse, New York. Round six coming up. John Summerlin, left corner. Eddie Machen on the right side. If you join us late, just to bring you a bit up to date for the first half of the action. The second round was Machen's best by far. And in the third, fourth, and fifth, Big Summerlin seemed to come on with those body shots. Mm. Hard hooks and right hands. Machen seems a bit hurt. Machen is dazed a little bit. Two minutes to go in this round. Summerlin's a heavy hitter around the body, and now whacking around the head. He's landing his good punches. to go in this sixth round. becomes more dangerous as the rounds wear on. Less than a half a minute to go in the sixth round. <laughs> Summerlin bending a lot and whacking good punches from a crouch position. Say, fans, here's a fight we should all get into, the fight against tuberculosis. Every five minutes, one American breaks down with TB. Every half hour, TB kills. Help protect your home from TB. Fight TB by buying and using Christmas seals. We're looking into the corner of 24-year-old Eddie Machen, managed by Sid Flaherty, who's looking up towards the screen right now, or at least toward the camera. Sid, of course, was the astute MGR of Bobo Olsen, former champion of all the middleweights. As for Machen, 
He's rated high, number seven by Matt Fleischer and Ring Magazine. An all-around athlete, a former high school football star, was offered a scholarship for college, but decided to become a fighter. Oh, he's licked such guys as Julio Medeiros, Nino Valdez, Walter Hafer, and Big John Holman. A perfect record so far with 18 straight. We're waiting now for round seven, and here we go. In New York State, the round scoring system is the system employed with points added to rounds in the event of an even fight. In other words, the fellow whom you think deserves the round gets a note or a nod for the round and then gets at least a minimum of one point for winning that round and can get as high as four depending on his margin of victory. You tally up the round scores at the end of the 10, and uh, you have your winner. <laughs> Machen seems to be a much better boxer and puncher from long range. In close quarters, Summerlin appears to have a decided edge. Summerlin works more on the inside. We have about one minute to go on the seventh round. Ooh. hook pack power. This fight, of course, has an important bearing on the heavyweight division, on a future opponent for the new champion, Floyd Patterson. And because of its importance, you can see some fellows like Truman Gibson, a very important figure with the IBC and a fine fellow. And Francis J. Suhan, the commissioner here, one of the commissioners of New York State, and Dan Dowd and many others. Oh. Less than 10 seconds to go on this seventh round. of your days, you'll sing the praise of Pabst Old Tankard Ale, brewed the traditional English way from a recipe centuries old. There's the hearty flavor of old England in Pabst Old Tankard Ale, a flavor only time, costly ingredients, and exacting brewing skill can give. On these wintry days, ale is such a fine drink, and Pabst brews a genuine dry ale with all the authority that a real ale must have. If you've never tasted Pabst Old Tankard Ale, try it now. Meet the Copper Knight on Pabst Old Tankard Ale. A change of pace for a new adventure in taste. Only three more rounds to go and or nine more minutes of fighting if it goes all the way. Number eight. white trunks, 
only had three fights as an amateur, winning two and boxing to a draw in the other three-rounder, but he's been well-schooled, soundly taught with the the classic punches, the straight jab, left jab, and the, the good straight right hand, and the hands high. Two minutes more in the eighth round. Mm, these are three very important final rounds. For a big man, a heavyweight, Machen has a nice left jab and a left lead can set you up for follow-up shots. in the black trunks has been well schooled in the art of fighting a smart fighter Big John from Detroit seems to have tired a little bit minute to go in this round. Condition, an important factor from now till the last bell. It's Eddie Machen's corner first. Let's look and see if we can tell exactly what the condition is thus far with only six more minutes of fighting to go. Well, Machen has everything at stake in these final six minutes. He looks okay. Sid Flaherty isn't doing much talking in the corner. They're just getting Machen ready for the ninth and tenth round. Eddie has his work cut out for him. Can he deliver that big bomb? Now... Let's move over and look into Johnny Summerlin's corner. John, of course, has fought well. He's tried hard all the way. His body punches have been tremendously effective. Talking with him in the corner is his chief corner man, uh, telling him, of course, exactly what he wants and what he doesn't want from now on. What will their strategy be? Will it be to put more combination punches toward the body and head? Will it be to set the pace? make the other fellow miss. The ninth round. It's hard to put a yardstick on any athlete if he has an unsullied record. 18 straight for the boy in white trunks, Eddie Machen. You can't really put that yardstick on him to know exactly how good he is or isn't. You've got to say, well, he's one of the best. But I wonder if Summerlin reads the record book. Two minutes to go in the ninth round. We did a bit of homework for this important heavyweight fight and found that uh, Machen in his 18 pro fights, unbeaten of course, has been in the ring for only 81 rounds of combat to date. Four with 
would be par for the course for the boy from California, the kid from the coast. That's four rounds per outing. Big Somerlin seems to be waging the same sort of fight that we called when uh, he beat Harold Carter. Good body punches. Ooh, Somerlin hurt with 30 seconds to go in the ninth round. Is Machen a good finisher? Can Summerlin weather this big storm, the big hurricane? Rich man, poor man, bigger man thief, doctor, lawyer, Indian chief. Well, sir, the point is that we went out and interviewed all kinds of men, thousands of them, and we found out that whenever men go out to buy an aftershave lotion for themselves, by golly, they choose men and skin bracer two to one over any other brand. Now, we've checked this again and again, and it always comes out two to one. Well, why? Tell you what you do. Try it, and I think you'll know why. There's a fresh wake-up tingle that helps you look fit, feel fit. Oh, and ladies, uh, right now you can get Men and Skin Bracer in a handsome gift package like this one with talc, only one dollar. Just right for uh, certain stockings, huh? Here it is, Skin Bracer. Well, friends, we've got a last big round coming up for you. Round number 10. The boys seem to be fine. and fighting rather low and showing lots of heart. Plenty of determination. Well, I have a funny feeling that this is a very important last round. Hmm. has been tiring from the, well, I'd say he tired in about the middle of the eighth, and of course was hurt in the late seconds of the ninth. Two minutes more and this fight will be over. is hurt again. He's hurt. Has a little over a minute to go. Someone's experience is helping him a lot toward the finish. The fact that he can fight rather low and bend underneath the big bombs of Eddie Machen. Machen trying to land the M-bomb. Exactly 55 seconds and more to go in the fight. Black Trunks played a bit of possum for us, I believe. Summerlin's right eye partially closed with a half minute to go in the fight. Referee Joe Palmer asked John Summerlin if he could finish. How about that, huh?
15 seconds to go. And Summerlin is hurt once more. But, ooh. Lots of heart. It'll go all the way. That's for sure. It's over. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's over. A good hard fight. Well, we'll have the decision in just a moment. Here's music to your thirst. Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. In Pabst Blue Ribbon, you'll find the lightness, the brightness that your taste has been looking for, but blended with hearty, old-fashioned character. It takes years of experience and brewing skill to brew a fine beer like Pabst Blue Ribbon. And Pabst Blue Ribbon is a product of America's oldest national brewer, established 1844. It's nice any time to get together with Pabst Blue Ribbon. So right now, sing out for Pabst Blue Ribbon, finest beer served anywhere. Well, folks, Norm Rothschild, the fine young promoter here in Syracuse, is beaming from ear to ear. He knows he's had a winner, put on a good show. Billy Brown, the Madison Square Garden matchmaker, also here tonight, and Billy looks toward the future. The winner of this fight can uh, go on and meet a Hurricane Jackson, perhaps, and then eventually maybe get in the squared circle with Mr. Patterson, the champion of all the big men in the boxing world. Right now, Mr. Suhan and Dan Dowd are examining the slips of the two judges, Richie Fazio and Dick Albino, and referee Joe Palmer. The round scoring system, did you score with us? Well, here's Dick Tobin, and uh, we're ready for that decision, Dick, as soon as you get the microphone and uh, yell it out to the people around the nation. Hold on, everybody. An important decision. Right. Dick Tobin. I got a holy chair. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge uh, Richie Fazio and Judge Dick Albino have the same score. They scored seven and three for Machen. <laughs> referee, referee Joe Palmer scores at six and four. Machen, winner by unanimous decision, Eddie Machen. Folks, Eddie Machen's the winner unanimously. The referee six and four, and the two judges each seven and three. And uh, naturally, he's the big man with 19 straight, 14 knockouts, five via the decision route. He looked impressive in the second, eighth, ninth, and tenth. His act, his stretch, or his uh, well, his uphill climb in the final three rounds, I believe, won it for him. I thought it was exceptionally close, a good hard fight for big men. He's an excellent puncher and a great prospect. And I want to say thanks to the boys here at WHEN-TV for our fight pickup in Syracuse, New York. I also want to uh, tell you that my good buddy and your excellent friend, Big Jack Drees, 6'7 or 6'6 six, six worth, in good condition once again. And we're happy to report that Jack will be back behind our TV microphones. Next week, we'll move over to the other side and try to call your blow-by-blow blow for you via radio. So uh, whether you catch it one way or the other, don't forget next Wednesday we've got an excellent fight for you between a couple of top featherweights, namely Paul Jorgensen from Texas and, of course, Carmela Costa from Brooklyn. That seems to be it. This is Steve Ellis uh, who tells you that I'll be back in a moment with news on next week's fight. Good boy, Steve.